that hitch on there to pull it. All right, Bearfield. What? Let's give a daily plan. Daily plan? Daily plan. Um, well, first of all, we've got a rookie in training. And that is? Brian Sale. Brian Cornbread Sale. Cornbread. Yeah, we got a rookie in training over here. I got him with a sledgehammer. <laughs> Teach him how to run a sledgehammer. Yeah. All right, you got a... Glenn usually gives this, but he's pretty caught up in gin. Uh, Southern Farmer Tip of the Week. Tip of the Week. Well, I guess I can go with what we're doing. Don't put too much weld on them tips whenever you weld them on there so you can knock them off with a hammer. So a subpar weld is key. Subpar. Subpar. Uh, and this is you on the track tractor? Yeah. Get your hood up like something's wrong. Yeah, Mike. I had a oil leak on that pipe on the side. Y'all got it fixed though. But he, I don't know, come down here this morning and put some put that gasket on there. Yeah. Make a gasket. Yeah, we gotta go. We gotta rehip. Finna plant some Good. corn. Good luck with you. Yeah. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Hope y'all enjoy this episode. It's the first day of fall tillage. Um, really nice, pretty sunshiny. Not very often, uh, you know, a week or so after harvest, we get to run in the fields like we're able to do right now. As you can tell, it's really nice and dry. We are running the wheel rich 12 row we've got it set on 38 inch spacing uh it's a we call it a hipper chopper i think it may be called a lister cultivator uh you know like in a on the brochure or something we call it a hipper chopper it has these uh shanks that run in every middle with the plow sweep then the chopper as you can tell it spins knocks down the bed uh, similar to what a do-all might do. Will Rich makes do-alls to be really good do-all. Um, then another set of shanks, that's the front front sweeps, back sweeps. Uh, we had to lower these down. When we were running in uh, tilled up ground last spring, we had these, I think, as you can see the bolt holes there, the bottom one was here, maybe. I don't know. We, we dropped, we dropped uh, every shank about two and a half inches. Um, it's making a real nice bed. Not very firm, but by the time this sits out here uh, all winter, it will be right here at the end not the prettiest right here at the end i'm having to follow these old rows but yeah all these old cotton stalks will crumple up good they'll be brittle uh we'll just come in here our plan is to come in um 
late March, early April. Hit this with another do all. Maybe, yeah, for sure do all. And kind of remove a lot of these stalks, a lot of the debris. Follow that with a corn planter. Uh, this has been in cotton, I believe three years now. So this particular farm where we're at. So yeah, come back and uh, if gonna run water furs, if it drains well, we get a dry spell in uh, we get a dry spell during that time, early spring. We'll come in, shape these beds up how we want them, and plant some corn, some 38 inch corn. Uh, and we can always go back to cotton, or if we want to do soybeans, so we can plant them on these. If we want to do, uh, we can always plow it up and start over. If for some reason we want to plant something flat. But this is really wet nature dirt. Uh, so it really helps, we think, to have it up on a bed and uh, slower to drain bottom land. And yeah, here's the rear shanks. Uh, well, like we said, we dropped them down and this is sort of a finisher, a rolling basket, hamster wheel, hamster cage, squirrel cage, whatever you want to call it. Uh, rolling basket on the back of this. And really like the way it, uh, of course this is very sandy dirt right here, but in some heavier clay, sticky, clotty type soils, we really like the way it finishes the top of the bed. Uh, we planted all our cotton and a lot of beans right behind this thing the past year. So, pulling it with an 82, 85 R, and I am running guidance, but it's really not necessary. Um, just kind of do it because it's on the tractor. And honestly, this thing is a little bit heavy for this tractor. Uh, we put some extra weights. We put uh, eight extra weights on it than what it had uh, prior. I pulled it with an 8310 last spring. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to stop and give you guys a rundown of what I was pulling today and what I, what I was doing to the soil and what our plans were. So, I had to stop and check it out anyway. I wanted to make sure everything was rolling and nothing was locked up. And no clouds were caked up too bad. So, anyway, a little waterfall right there. Nice to look at. But I better get back to going. Got a long ways to go. Like I said, we're just running over last year's rows. Um, and yes, I'm auto steering right here. Not necessary at all, but it, you know, <laughs> I've got it in the tractor. I'm running the uh, lift on about 12%, uh, 6.5 miles per hour. Some of this dirt's really hard. Uh, it's probably going on average six to eight inches deep, maybe not quite that deep, but that's in the middles. Uh, a lot of that is what's silted in over the over the year. Uh, the beds were quite a bit taller, as you can see right there. It's not not they're not very tall at all. We they were also having to deal with. The sprayer ruts, cotton picker ruts, fertilizer ruts that's made throughout the year. Um, this just really reshapes the beds and we're gonna get rid of those stalks. That's the only thing that's kind of standing in the way. And the corn's a lot more resilient if that you know if that plant works out. Uh, the way it spikes up coming out of the soil, the little sprout of the corn plant. Um, not as hard to get a stand so you can get away with a little bit more uh, a little bit more forgiving uh, than most than like say beans or cotton so rolling
Well, we got finished where we were at. Uh, he stopped and greased his disc. We brought the disc over here. Um, just to kind of trim up around the ends where we've been planting on the turn rows. And we're gonna quit before dark. What do you got to say, Brian? It's a good day? Hard at it. Hard at it. He ain't done nothing hard. Yeah. <laughs>